two important points in BCNL is the BCNL access. The access after successful access, you are in need to know how to manipulate the stone and how you finish your BCNL. Today, we will talk about all these items. The first thing we talk about the visibility. Once your nephroscope inside, you may see all this color. You may directly see the stone or you may see white out, that's called white out. This means that you are too close to the mucosa. You are in need to go somewhat backward. There is what's called red out. You may see clots like this. This clots, you mean there is some multiple trials, you may find this clots. You are in need just to put your ambulance inside and with the suction, you can direct the ambulance up and down and do the suction of all these clots. Here. Sometimes the visibility, you are at the end of the maneuver and there is market bleeding and you are about to finish the maneuver. We can put a gauze here and close the wash just to terminate the maneuver. What's called the yellow out. Yellow out means very nephric fat. So you are maybe outside the pelvic cell system or you may transfix the kidney. You can estimate this by the lens of the ambulance sheets outside here, the guide wire inside. You see the yellow sign, the perinephric fat outside the kidney. The dilator was in and your wire sure inside. You can manipulate the tip of the nephroscope to be enter inside the pelvic cell system. Another case, stone, the BUG, and you see this yellow sign, the ambulance too much inside, so you perforate the pelvic cell system, go backward, looking for the mucosa. Mostly it was up because the direction of the dilator entered the end. So go backward, looking upward, you will find the pelvic cell system and you will find the stone. Very important issue is the lost track. How it occurs? Sudden amber respiratory movement. So we prefer to do it under general anesthesia. Forceful stone extraction. When you extract a big fragment, your assistant should support the ambulance or at least tell you you have to stop the ambulance about to be go outside. How to deal with the lost track? Reduce irrigation. If you have a safety wire, and I advise all of you to have a safety wire, that, that is not a problem. Just follow the safety wire, looking for the track, you will find the track. Or if you don't have a safety wire, reduce the wash, the irrigation, looking here and there for the open, but try to be very meticulous. You will find it in between the very nephric fat. There is very important, what is the difference between lost tract in cases with previous renal surgery and in cases without previous renal surgery? It is one of the advantage of the previous renal surgery, the way is paved here. The tract is lost, go outside, go inside. The, the way is paved because of fibrosis. So you can enter very easily inside the pelvic cell system in case of lost tract in cases with previous renal surgery. However, in fresh cases, sometimes it is difficult. It's a case of tubeless case. We go outside and try to enter again. It is very difficult because the tissue is soft. And once you are outside, it will be collapsed very easily. And you may not be able to find your track. This is one of the advantage of the previous renal surgery. How to deal? You can try this. This is our technique. You can add the kidney in a closed system. We can use a hydrophilic liquid from the arteric catheter. It will go up and down and try to find the open and the go to the track. This is maybe successful in the upper calyx and in the lower calyx, but it is very difficult to be successful in the middle one. Here, we pass the zebra wire. We are outside, lost the track here. They were coiled up and down, searching for his way, and he's fine the open in the lower calyx and define his way outside. We are looking from inside, the wire inside, and this is the lost track. Once you catch the wire, you can easily go inside the lost track. Sometimes this is failed or it's not successful. 
some advice to put methylene below one or two millimeter in 10 centimeter and inject through the arteric catheter, looking for the methylene below in this lost tract, or try repuncture. But the repuncture is very difficult because of extravasation and because of the calyx mostly collapsed. Or you try another calyx, sometimes a very rare, you have to postpone the maneuver for two or three days. Stone disintegration. What are the tips and tricks in your stone disintegration? First of all, when you are using the pneumatic, especially in soft stone, you have to the, you have to hold the probe in your hand, not put the probe over the stone. Avoid transfixation, especially in smooth stone like this. The probe will transfix the stone. Once this is occurred, this will lead to bleeding. You have to be sure that your pneumatic is very strong. Otherwise, this is a weak pneumatic lithoclast pushing a hard stone. This will lead to perforation because you push, but you didn't disintegrate the stone. Sometimes intraoperative, you find the stone in front of the nephroscope like this, but actually you didn't see the stone. Where is the stone? In this situation, you have to look with your nephroscope aboard. Here, we are looking. Here is the tip of the stone. This limited space, no way to enter with the flexible. How to manage case like this? We use our needle from the outside. Try, try to manipulate the stone. You see the tip of the needle here. Here, try, very. The stone is pushed from this, from this perpendicular area. Another situation, stone in front of me, but unfortunately, unfortunately, I don't see the stone. The stone sometimes in another calyx. So you can push it to save an extra puncture. Here, we push the stone, the stone is pushed. And this is the picture from inside. We try to manipulate the stone with the needle here from this calyx. And we are lucky that we are able to deliver the stone and save another axis. Very important to know the anatomy, the anatomy of the lower calyx and the anatomy of the upper calyx. The upper calyx is mediolateral, but the lower calyx is anteroposterior. So there is a stone here in the lower calyx. We did this in the L. Unfortunately, the radiologist tell me that it is only single stone. We dilate, enter inside, disintegrate the stone as it has been as it has been appeared like a single stone, stone is integrated, extracted, and we are about to go outside. What happened? Under fluoroscopy, we find the stone, it is the same like the stone. What I did, I did nothing. But no, there's a branch the stone in the lower calyx, this anterior and the posterior. You have to turn your nephroscope, looking downward for the posterior branch, posterior calyx, of the anterior, as I said about bronze nail, this is anterior branch of the lower calyx. Very important, in cases of previous renal surgery, you have to ask your radiologist for CT to be sure that all the stones are inside the pelvic cell system, no stone in the perinephric space. It's a case of previous renal surgery. We didn't find this stone. Look here. During the puncture of the kidney, the stone is fixed. The stone here in the perinephric, in the perinephric space, it is not inside the pelvic LCL system. So you have to ask your radiologist from the start in, uh, in cases of previous renal surgery. It is very important in cases with risk also, cases with previous renal surgery. This is child with multiple stone like kidney presented to me two months post operative of right piece in the L. This is the picture. He's come to me with stones here and there and the double GST. You have to think, first you have to think in the BUJ. This BUJ may be injured. And also this stone is embedded inside the renal parenchyma, as you see. You have to put this in your mind before doing any manipulation in cases of previous renal search. Sometimes you are inside the calyx, but you don't find where the opening Look for the bolus edema here. Stop in front of the bolus edema. Increase the wash. 
people of Sidima will be opened and you will find the stone be close or beside this policy. Sometimes there is an accessible stone. There is staghorn stone and at the end there is a piece of the stone escaped. You can use your needle to manipulate the stone to return it to the pelvis as it was in the pelvis, pushing it from outside to be in front of the nephroscope. You can from the start, this is case, stone upper cell left quarter and two lower calcium stone. We do push back, there is a stone in the middle calyx here. You can from the start redistribute the stone, try to push it here. Never before doing the puncture, try to push the stone outside the calyx. It may be successful and it may be not here. This stone is succeeded and escaped to the pelvis. Once you enter inside, you will find the first one, the push the back one in the upper ureter. And this is the second one when you, which you pushed by your needle. And this is the third one. You can also relocate the stone here, look to the beauty. It is a small stone in the upper calyx and small and another stone in the lower calyx. We put the needle and inject saline by the needle. You will see the stone is washed by the saline. So when there is a stone in accessible calyx, you can inject saline, or if it is small, you can manipulate it with the tip of the needle. Also, you can use the ureteric catheter. Here, the lower calycial axis, stone passed in the pelvis. We try to go beside, but it is difficult to take this angle. You can here inject saline from the ureteric catheter. It will be pushed in front of me. The stone in the pelvis, this is extra renal pelvis. We inject saline by the arterial caster, so the stone is pushed in front of me and it can be removed easily. Sometimes we have through and through guide wire and there is a stone escaped and I cannot go to take this angle. Well, how to deal with the situation? Withdraw the guide wire. It's a guide wire inside, but I remove it from the distal part. And you can inject with the guide wire even inside. I need just only one centimeter to be able to remove the stone. And the stone is pushed with the guide wire inside the arterial caster, and it is now in front of the nephroscope. Of course, flexible nephroscope can solve all this problem. However, there is some limitation for the angle. Flexible nephroscope, you are in need an angle not less than 72 percent. Otherwise, you will not be able, less case like this, this is acute angle. When you try the flexible, you will not be able to extract stone like this, and you are in need here. The flexible it is not here, is a need for a dilated space, it is a need for, for angle obtuse. Here, it is not able to go to the scalix, so you have to dilate it. Very important if the stone is inaccessible and everything is failed to relocate or extract the stone, you can do second puncture. However, the first one, you are in need to put a folicaster, inflate the balloon inside, close the folicaster, then you can opacify the vulvical cell system, you can, otherwise the dye will escape in this track. At the end of the maneuver, at the end of the maneuver, we have to evaluate. Very important, you have to evaluate the stone fragment. You have to withdraw your umbrella. Mostly there is a stone behind the tip of the umbrella escaped here or gravels from this integration. You are in need to evaluate this area very well. And sometimes massive disintegration and the gravels like this, withdraw the rotary catheter, inject saline to clear any fragments here. You have to end your maneuver with a flexible nephroscopy. According to the American guidelines, this will increase the stone free rate. Sometimes there, at the end of the maneuver, there is shadow like this. I don't know if this is stone or not. In this situation, you have to put your needle in this collection, inject saline, saline so the dye will disappear. It is not a stone, it is a calyx with a retained dye.
if you suspect a colonic injury at any time as a suspicious of a colonic injury, here we move the colon shadow is moving with me and I'm not sure, you can intraoperative inject the dye in the, to do a nephrostogram. If there is colonic injury, you will see the dye inside the calyx, or sometimes you can do it visually. I'll go to the tubeless case and I suspect the colon, I'll go visually exploring the tract. Here the tract is healthy, nothing is very nephric fat. This is the muscle. There is no colon. You are in need to visual exploration of the tract. If there is a pleural, a suspicious pleural injury, you can enter over if this is under fluoroscopy to ensure that the cost of renic angle is free. Lastly, exit strategies you to use the tubeless or use a tube. It depends. Uh, the regard the size, it is better to use the small size, less pain, less leakage, and bleeding is not increased. Very important exit strategy if there is an indication for double G stent, uh, cases of a solitary kidney, case of multiple stones, there is a residual on the extra. There is tips and the tricks. The proximal coil, you have to be sure that the proximal coil inside the pelvic cell system it is not in the tract. Okay, I'm sure, I'm sorry. You have to be sure that the proximal coil of the double J inside here, the double J is outside. This is the kidney from the outside, the capsule. You have to take it with your forceps and ensure the double J, the proximal coil inside the pelvic cell system it is not outside. Otherwise, there will be leakage and there may be the patient presented with brain-nephric abscess. The second important point, when you relocate the proximal coil, be sure that the distal coil it is different from man to woman. In woman, it will be against the same pubis. In man, it will be like this. If we don't put this in our mind, in female, there will be more withdrawal from up and it will be shift to the, the inside the ureter and you are in need to relocate it again. Very important, the last stitch. You have to do it, I did it by myself. You have to do it very deep to control any, any bleeding from the skin subcutaneous tissue. Thank you.